so uh, was this kind of a high school band or was it? Yeah, exactly. High yeah. school band, yeah. We started out actually, I'm embarrassed to tell you this, we started out as the 007s. <laughs> Did you play the James Bond theme then? We couldn't figure it out, but uh, <laughs> we were too young. But the, there was a, the, the, my friends, there were some black friends of mine in, in the same school had a band called the Double O Souls. Yeah. And we would play concerts together. What was a big hit called Agent Double O Soul? It was? Yeah, I forgot the singer. That's a, that's a good, that was a real soul song though. But anyway, yeah, keep yeah, on. That didn't last long. That didn't last long. The whole, everything kind of hit the fan and uh, you know, the, uh, the Vietnam War and everything, and we started growing our hair long, and we changed the name pretty rapidly to post-war baby boom blues band. But the, the, these guys, you haven't seen much of them. I'm uh, definitely not this guy who went to, to play with, with Kiss, but what about the others? No, I haven't seen them in years. Maybe 30 years. So, next step for your musical education, your musical career, what will that be then? Well, I moved to, uh, I went to college. I was 17, I went to college in upstate New York, in uh, New Pulse, New York, and it was just a, uh, a little little tiny tiny town, a provincial town, and uh, suddenly all these kids from New York and all the big cities showed up and started, the university exploded, and the hippie thing happened, and I, we, I played, must have played with 50, 60 bands. Bands changing all the time, people playing, played all the time. Lived on, lived on top of the bars, lived in the bars, played music, you know, that kind of yeah, it's for 15 years. And you played uh, all kinds of music, but oh, yeah. nothing uh, from top 40. No, no, never. never. <laughs> that was uh, that was our, that was our nemesis. We could not do that. It was impossible. We couldn't do it. They would laugh us out of the bar. If you look back on that time, uh, is it just a whole lot of? Uh, a hippie life or a lot of confusion? Or would you say, can you see, see from afar that there was some uh, pattern in your development uh, musically? I probably could have learned faster, but I definitely was learning all the time, but I, I took my time about it. My friends from up there always say, we can never retire because we had our retirement when we were 17 and 18. <laughs> <laughs> we already had it. You had retired? <laughs> Now we just have to work till we drop. You know? Sure. But you were around uh, in, in Woodstock, you were 20 at that time? Uh, at the festival, yeah. Yeah. I was working there for a company called uh, Food for Love. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, true, I had no idea, I, I didn't even know it was going to be a big festival. I, I wasn't reading the newspaper, I wasn't watching TV or anything like that. And uh, I needed money to pay my rent. And someone said they're hiring people over the mountain in Bethel. And I went over there and got a job. Worked there for a week. Uh, food for love, you said. Um, that could also. Uh, you never forgot the music, so. Uh, I didn't see any music. No, but uh, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, really um, ripping off Marietta's article now because then uh, she uh, writes that you went down to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, which is a place for famous for uh, all kinds of folk music, acoustic, uh, bluegrass festivals, everything, and also blues strong blues scene and uh, I asked her to bring some records and um, Bill is actually on this album uh, issued by the um, magnificent English uh, re-released uh, record label called Flyright and he's uh, the picture here shows um, uh, Tar Heel Slim, he used to be a great R&B singer in New York, and the one on the left is Peg Leg Sam, who yeah. had played in medicine shows. Yeah, 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 he's great. And Bill is credited here as the bass player, so uh, we should have a big applause for him, please. Yeah. I mean, this must... Uh, how, how come you ended up in Chapel Hill for this uh, event? Uh, a, there was a guy named Pete Lowry who started uh, uh, Tricks Records and we were going to play with Eddie Kirkland who's on here too in uh, 1971 and he took the drummer and I, my friend Dennis Minervini, down here to do this to be the backing band for all these different guys for the whole week. It was great fun. It was the first time they had blues at Chapel Hill University. 
so they say. <laughs> Would this have been the kind of uh, turning point in, in your early musical career? Getting yeah. into these? I had been into it before, but I had never actually met these guys. The older guys who were the real hardcore, big Sam, good guy. Kids were afraid of him when he walked down the street. He had a wooden leg and a gigantic scar on his face from falling off a train. Kids would run away. They were leaving the blues. I guess so. <coughs> was this a, uh, uh, yeah, you know, we, we went around to, to people's houses and, uh, and uh, had drinks and uh, it was just uh, quite an experience. It was, you're right, it was a turning point. It was an eye-opening experience for me, coming from New York rather well-off middle class and seeing uh, what was really going on down there. Because this was um, at the height of the first blues revival, we're talking yeah. about 1971. Yeah, exactly. And you had the, uh, like, uh, some, the Chicago Blues Festival that just started, that was in 1969, the first time they had that big uh, event. So this is right at the starting point, so you, you, you were there. Well, I met Eddie Kirkland here, and I played with him for 12 years after this. So that's, that uh, companionship started uh, yeah. as a result of this uh, tour to Chapel Hill. I went to meet him at, his, at the motel. He was underneath his Ford station wagon changing the transmission. <laughs> <laughs> what? He was underneath his, his the car? Yeah, he was underneath the car changing, yeah. changing the transmission on a Ford. Yeah, we have been A work. gigantic engine, a V8. <laughs> But he had wor worked for the Ford Motor Plant yeah, in yeah, Detroit, yeah. so he knew how, what to do. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. And um, it's also interesting to say in this connection that Eddie Kirkle coming from, uh, or he was based in Detroit, he belonged to the Detroit blues scene, which people don't, uh, are not uh, aren't very aware of often. I mean, you had Eddie Kirkland, you had, who used to play with John Lee Hooker. Yeah, he's the second voice in all the early Yeah, and he meant a lot for John Lee Hooker. And then uh, I'm mentioning this because uh, Bill and uh, the rest of the band, they played on um, uh, Louisiana Reds, Back to the, uh, what's it, Back to the Black, Black Bayou. Uh, Black Bayou. And um, also Louisiana Red was part of that uh, really uh, happening blues scene, electric blues scene, early 1950s, and he used to call himself Rocky Fowler at that time, and he was playing such a loud slide guitar that you, he was really bursting the, uh, the speakers. And he was very innovative as a guitar player at that time. It's great to hear that, for, I mean, you, you, you played with both these guys, Eddie Kirkland and Louisiana Red. 40 years apart. So there's, uh, there's a meaning to that. And uh, I'm really happy to, to know that the uh, Back to the Black Bayou is uh, nominated for a uh, blues award this year in Memphis. And it probably stands a good chance of getting a, an award. Well, we'll see what happens. So um, there's also uh, one other course in your career. This is uh, more like folk and country. Um, and that's Tom Russell. I asked. That's the only question we were able to actually discuss before we came up from the stage. Now, but you have been in contact, uh, and I'm, and I have been knowing uh, Bill for many years. Uh, actually, the first time I met you was when you, Tom Russell was recording an album in Oslo called "The Ro Road to Bayamon. Oh, yeah. and I met you uh, uh, beside the Monk Museum because we're taking pictures. Raymond Moskin was taking pictures at the circus. At the circus. At the circus. And uh, hello, hello, Bill, hello, Ivan. And uh, you, you said, uh, I'm, first, I, first thing you said, I've been playing with Eddie Kirkland for 12 years. I did? Yeah, that's the first thing you said. Usually I say, tell people, don't touch me. No, that's <laughs> Eddie Kirkland. <laughs> well, I happen to say, I, I would like to hear some blues music, and then said that. Okay. So there was some connection there.